Hello there, this is Dr. Mintz. This is a 17-month-old female with classic findings of croup. And what we see is irregular narrowing below the level of the glottis, the vocal cords. Inferior to that level, there is an irregular narrowing for a short segment. In this case, it's more of a long segment because it must be a rather severe example of croup, but we have this length of the subglottic airway that is narrowed and visibly irregular. And in the lateral view, you can see that right here. So we're going from the mouth down to the lungs, of course, to breathe. And so here you have the epiglottis and the area epiglottic folds. And this is the back of the tongue back here. So the epiglottis flips up against the back of the tongue or nearly so. And right here you see it all looks gray and that's because it's narrowed. And we're looking at it from the lateral view, but it, in the AP view, it's very visibly narrowed in terms of its actual diameter. So this is croup and we get also hypopharyngeal distension as you see back here. And some people have the mistaken impression that that has to do with the amount of pressure that's building up in the back of the mouth. No, the mouth is open, and so all parts freely communicating with the mouth are at the same pressure. So this is just because the child is trying to reduce the resistance of the posterior oropharyngeal airway, and so they are taking a big breath and trying to distend their mouth and posterior oral cavity as much as possible to diminish the resistance so they can get air into their lungs. Here you see the unerupted molars and this is where the temporal bone would be and the mastoid air cells are superimposed upon these areas of shadows and Let's see, on the AP view again, so this would be the level of the glottis, or the vocal cords, and so this subglottic area, area of narrowing is croup, and it can produce severe problems sometimes with breathing, and is most often of a viral etiology, although it may be bacterial.